Okay, good game. That was a great way to die. <laughs> that was amazing. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves 10 yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What's going on guys and welcome to part two of this week's challenge week. Uh, very excited for this deck. We do have Splendid Reclamation as the build around card and Ender Seas, who was one of our two winners from last week, is back with a nice little graveyard list here. We're going to talk about that in just a second, but before we do that, we do have to acknowledge the fact that we've got a new challenge week card for next week. Now, next week is probably going to be our last week before the, the holiday break and all that stuff, just a heads up. But I wanted to try this one out. This is Grolnok, the Omnivore. I think this is going to be hilarious. This is a frog themed card. Whenever a frog you control attacks, mill three cards. Uh, whenever a permanent card is put into your graveyard from your library, exile it with a croak counter on it. You may play lands and cast spells from among cards you own in exile with croak counters on them. Very interesting card, one that I'm very excited to try out. Uh, and so please, 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 please submit decks now. You can do that anytime uh, and we'll we'll check that out. But let's jump into today's deck again. Ender Seas, thank you so much for the submission. This is a pretty straightforward, forward, wow, Golgari kind of landfall list. Uh, the idea, we obviously are gonna be milling a good bit. So we've got the Binding of the Titans, Stitcher Supplier, uh, Glow Spore Shaman, a lot of things that are hopefully gonna get some stuff into the graveyard. Splendid Reclamation is here to bring back all the lands that we hit in the graveyard and uh, hopefully get a lot of triggers off of things like Scoot Swarm and the Scythe Cat. Uh, as well as Nissa, which is just a really awesome card. Uh, we do have some interesting stuff, so Cultivate's in here, just gonna allow us to get some more lands, Aid the Fallen, which is gonna allow us to bring creatures back from the graveyard, so if they happen to kill a Scoot Swarm or a Scythe Cat, we can bring that back. Uh, dig Up, just gonna allow us to search through the deck as we need to. Nissa does bring back some of the creatures as well, which is important. Uh, and then the Eldest Reborn, uh, which is obviously a very interesting card as well. Uh, this does reanimate a card from a graveyard, not just our graveyard. So something to keep in mind there. We can certainly do some damage with that. Ramanop Excavator does allow us to play lands from the graveyard as well. And then we have a very basic land heavy, uh, uh, basic land split here. So I'm curious to see how this actually works out. Again, Ender Seas, thank you so much, my friend. We're gonna give this three games. We're gonna see how we do. Uh, on Monday, we did test out Breaded and Fried's very creative list. Uh, unfortunately, did not get any wins. So all you need to do is get a win and you are in the lead. Let's go ahead and jump into game one. All right, guys, and here we are for our first game. Uh, this is a pretty easy keep. Uh, it is a, not super slow, but it is just a little slow, but we'll do the best we can. I think we can do this. Um, I like the, the, the Glow Spore Shaman and the Binding of the Titans, and then we've got two options later on in terms of the, uh, the creatures that we'd like to play, so I'm very curious to see how this goes. I'm gonna start with the Shaman. Uh, this just seems like a very strong first play here. We can put that land back into our deck, or on top of our deck. Uh, just to guarantee we've got a fifth land here, and that'll help us get closer to the Scoot Swarm uh, play as well. So very happy to see that. Let's see how this works. All right, Arboreal Grazer, gonna be able to throw a land down. Curious to see what this deck ends up being. Uh, a five color deck, apparently. Uh, interesting. All right, uh, let's go ahead and do this. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the Scythe Cat out and attack with the Shaman. Uh, hit for three, pretty easy. Now, interesting, let's see what happens, because this could be any number of things. Looks like a Gilded Goose. Not what I expected uh, at all, <laughs> uh, but that's fine. Um, let's see. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna go ahead and play out that Scoot Swarm. Now they might have a counter here, I don't know but it looks like they don't. And then we're gonna split this up here. So this gets a counter, this spreads out a little bit. So now we've got kind of a powerful board presence splitting things up. I assume they've got ways to kill our stuff. I have no idea though. This is a interesting deck. I've not seen this. Hollowed Haunting, yeah. Previous challenge week card. Oh, I love that. Uh, very cool. Uh, unfortunately for them though, I don't think it's gonna do that much, at least not yet. Let's go ahead and drop this. 
Uh, again, just to spread the board out as much as we can. We'll go ahead and drop the Binding of the Titans. It's going to mill a few cards here. What did we mill, Alex? Okay. Uh, I'm happy with that. That's getting something out of there at the very least. Now, they can freely block one of these 1-1s, one or they can block one of these and they lose that creature, but regardless, we're going to get them down pretty close here, so I guess they just kind of have to sweep, which I'm sure they might be able to do. Doesn't look like it. Maybe it's just hollowed haunting. Uh, okay. We're going to exile these two. Uh, just to get them out of there. We're going to drop a land. And I guess we'll drop the Stitcher Supplier just because. And we did it. All right. That was like the most efficient win possible. Ender Seas, you're in the lead. Let's jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, and yeah, I mean, this is pretty easy keep. We just see what happens. Um, a little interested to see if we can make this work. I'm going to go ahead and dig up for a uh, basic forest here. Now, I know that doesn't sound very exciting and it's really not, but uh, we do have Scoot Storm in hand. We're going to want to get to six lands pretty quickly. So I think it's okay if we go ahead and do this. We'll mill a few cards for both us and the opponent. Uh, and looks like we're hitting a glass pool mimic. So interesting. Uh, hmm. It's like a teamer deck of some kind. Very curious. We're running into, into some very interesting decks. That's all I can say. Uh, let's exile you and I suppose you. Uh, we do gain a life from that, which is nice. And I'm going to go ahead and play the Scoot Swarm. Uh, this they don't have red mana out. Okay, now they do. <laughs> uh, but they're not, it doesn't look like gonna be heavy on the burn. We'll see. I don't know, this seems much more rampy, like just trying to play big stuff kind of deck. Hopefully they can't kill the Scoot Swarm, please don't. All right, cool. That's fine, 100%. Um, return target creature land from a graveyard to your hand. I want this. I think that's definitely the right call. Let's go ahead and drop this down. Uh, and I'm going to just go ahead and cultivate here and we'll drop you. This is just spreading out the board as much as we can, as early as we can. So now next turn, when we drop a basic land, hopefully if the Scoot Swarm sticks around, we just get more copies of that Scoot Swarm, uh, which is exactly what we want. And then Glows for Sam Shaman can come down. We're also deck thinning here because we do have quite a bit of lands in hand. So the idea is hopefully to get rid of some of these lands in the deck and then Got a little more to do, but I guess not. Uh, let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to throw the Shaman out. No reason really not to. Um, and we'll see what we mill here. Now, I will say this doesn't feel as heavy, heavily focused. I'm going to decline. We don't need another land. This does not seem as heavily focused on the Scoot Swarm or, or on the uh, Splendid Reclamation as the previous deck. That being said though, obviously it's quite good and obviously it's used as a over the top kind of win. So we haven't really seen it happen yet. This is only game two, of course, but hopefully next, uh, or in this game or the next, we can get something going here uh, to show off that splendid reclamation play and just how well that works. All right, dual caster mage to copy the shimmer. So this is gonna be a dual caster mage copy deck. That's scary. Uh, there is, I believe, an instant win off of this, but I don't know for sure. Uh, if not, there's still a lot of very scary combos that they're able to pull off, so we'll do the best we can. All right, give me just a non-land card off the top. That's all I need. Uh, no! <laughs> what the world? Um, we only have 24 lands, so I wouldn't expect that we have this many, uh, especially after cultivating. That seems a little crazy, but alas, here we are. We're gonna do the best we can. All right, Valakut Awakening is terrifying. Uh, if they have another dual caster mage, that's very, very scary. Uh, although that might be the, then the only thing they could do this turn, so that's helpful. I don't know, we'll see. Also, this is overexposed like crazy. Why didn't you guys tell me? All right, there we go, it's a little better. All right, they have four mana available. Now they have less. Um, so for two mana, I'm not scared. But I need a non-land off the top. All right, that's a non-land. It's not the best non-land, but it's a non-land. I can't complain. <laughs> All right. Um, 
No, I think we just... Well, I guess we... I think we do attack with everything here. If they want to trade off, that's fine. They can obviously freely block one of these, which is fine. That doesn't matter. But we need to keep pressuring them as best we can here, I think. Um, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is over half of their life total that they are looking at losing, uh, which just means that we are hopefully going to get them down to not having very many turns. Uh, and if we kill this Dualcaster Mage, that means any Mimics that they have at least can't copy it. Not that I think that necessarily does that much, but it's just something to think about. Uh, they very well might have a Sweeper as well, so I feel like not attacking in is kind of a mistake. Um, especially when we've got so many other Scoot Swarms, so any land now is going to give us just a lot. Alright, so there is an instant win in this deck. Uh, the Stormcaller is one that provides that, although they didn't kick it. Uh, so I guess they're not going to do it this turn. They're going to Neo form. So I get to do this twice into a Dualcaster Mage. Oh, does this win? They just get to copy Neo form a lot. Into another Dualcaster Mage to get another Neo form. I don't know if this wins or not. There's a way that I'm sure this can, but... Nice. I mean, that's really cool. Um, but what else do they have here? Just Mimics? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so their whole plan is to get as many Mimics out as possible to copy all of these mages. So that's where the, the Mimic that we exiled this comes into play is they get to neoform into it as many times as they want. This is a sick deck. This is really cool. Um, crucially though, oh, they give haste. Oh man. Oh, that's very good. That's very, very good. Okay. They're gonna exert this. Um, we definitely kill that. All right, so we're taking what? Six, nine, 18 there. Let's take it. Down to three, but then they get to do it again and we just lose. Wow. Okay. Good game. That was a great way to die. <laughs> that was amazing. Wow, okay, very, very cool. Unfortunately, not a win, but we got one more game to go. Let's see if we can do it. All right, guys, this is our third and final game. Uh, and yeah, I mean, I think it's a pretty easy keep. It's not a super exciting hand by any means, but uh, we should have some options here. The, the Eldest Reborn should be nice. Um, we can dig up turn one just to get a second swamp uh, and ensure that we've got kind of the stuff that we need here. So let's go ahead and do that. This is also just a great way to deck then. Um, let's get the swamp, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and we'll see what the opponent wants to do. Turn two, we've got the binding, so I'm happy to see that. There is the splendid reclamation, so that's pretty good. We just want to see if we can get, um, some stuff milled here that's worth it. Okay, merfolk, oh, all right, interesting, a uh, little nervous about that. That could be very good. Yep. All right, uh, let's get you and you out just for the sake of doing so. Gain a life and we'll drop that cultivate now. Doesn't really matter which lands we get since we've got all the colors we need at this point. Uh, very happy to have the Eldest Reborn here though. This is actually gonna be quite good. Um, curious to see, Realmwalker is very good in this list. Obviously it's not gonna be something they wanna sacrifice so it's probably gonna end up being the Elite. Um, but that's okay. Let's drop you. Let's drop you. All right. Um, eventually, so the Eldest Reborn allows us to get a creature or Planeswalker, which means Nyssa is probably going to be our target here. They did get rid of the Realmwalker. That's very shocking. Um, very, very surprised about that. Okay, well, now we're basically dead. Um, <laughs> this is all very good. 
Not only do they have the protection with the uh, Kira, but they've also got one of the best merfolk <clears throat> in the game. Uh, so that's terrifying. And again, we just seem to be drawing a lot of lands. Uh, not super helpful for our, uh, our sake here, but that's cool. Um, let's do that. Splendid Reclamation does absolutely nothing at the moment. Uh, so, <laughs> we'll see how this turns out. Another Coco. Okay, cool. Only a one-hit wonder, though. They only got a Merfolk Trickster, which is actually pretty useful. Um, it could, been, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, but, I mean, we're still, still pretty dead here. They keep putting the counter on the Deep Root Elite, but they're countering it with the Kira. It's actually really funny. Um, I'm gonna go for the Nissa, I think. I think that's just the better play. Uh, let's see. Drop you, for sure. Drop you. Just gonna throw some counters around here, which is at least something. Um, and then I think we'll just untap this and uh, make it a 3-3. We'll take that action. And again, we can't really Splendid Reclamation, so I think we just end up passing here. Uh, oh, we should have attacked there. I'm sorry, I thought that effect was permanent. That's only until the end of the turn. That was a mistake on my end. We definitely should have attacked. Uh, what? Yeah! <laughs> what? All right, uh, well, let's chat. All right, so two wins, Ender Seas. Uh, not sure about that last one, I'll be honest. They obviously whiffed on Coco, uh, which is why I'm sure they gave up, but they didn't need to give up. Like, they still technically could have won the game very easily. We had a, land, uh, a handful of lands. We were doing nothing, um, but... That's cool, we got it. That's two wins, that puts you in the lead. Now keep in mind we do have Friday as well, so we'll see what happens there. Please continue to submit decks for this week and next week if you would like, and we will see you guys on Friday. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you soon.